Good afternoon, my friends. Happy Wednesday. The doctor is in the house. Welcome back to another episode of To Your Health with Dr. G on this great day. I tell you what, today's show is going to be fierce. We are talking everything testosterone. That's right, fellas, testosterone. Ladies, too. But this is going to be a great show. I'm so excited to keep this journey going on here today. My name is Dr. Mark Gomez. Welcome back. I'm a board-certified internal medicine physician practicing out of Edward Hospital in Naperville, Illinois. And I tell you what, today's topic is something that I wanted to talk about for a long time. A number of months ago, we did a show for the ladies. We talked about something called paging the OBGYN. We talked hormones and, and a lot of other things at that time. And I encourage you to go back to my website, www.drmarkcovis.com, to check that out. But today, testosterone. We're going to be breaking down myths, facts, and other realities of this awesome hormone for the guys. Hey, I want you guys to do this. I want you to share the show today. Keep this message going on. I've got a great panel of experts today. My great friends, you're gonna meet them in a few moments. We're gonna be breaking it down. We wanna set the record straight. And again, when it comes to things that we do on To Your Health with Dr. G, it's all about building trust and delivering truth. At the end of the day, we want you to all to be healthy. Men out there, ladies out there, anybody out there that's listening to us, we want you to have the tools for success. As you have success with your health, you're going to be more likely to have success in your life. So welcome back to another episode of Tear Health with Dr. G. We're here live on Facebook. We're here also in studio at Intellectual Radio. And we're going to have a great show today. So we're going to break down testosterone. But before we break it down, let me hit you with a quick disclaimer. The content of Tear Health with Dr. G is for informational and entertainment purposes only. And that the content is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, and or treatment. Further details can be found at www.toyourhealthwithdrg.com slash disclaimer. So here we are. Again, I've been wanting to do this show for quite some time. We want to set the record straight. I'm going to probably tell some personal stories of some stories of patients that have come in. But this hormone, testosterone, such a vital hormone. We're going to break it down. But again, for us as men out there, and really this show, this show is for everybody. But the men, I want you to pay attention because really the reality is that we want you to have success with your health. But there's so much Things, there's so many things that are out there. Guys, we get inundated by testosterone advertisements, this theme of machismo. I mean, everybody's got to be like a bodybuilder or, you know, or, or a baseball player, but we get inundated with information. But we want to set the record straight about testosterone. You know, we have a couple great board-certified clinicians that deal with this issue on a daily basis and can advise our men. At the end of the day, again, we want you to have all sorts of good health everything like that. Hey, so let's do this. So let's get right into it. So for those of you that are new to the show, what I do each week is I interview my great friends and colleagues, experts in their field, at the top of their game, and we talk about a particular topic. Today we're breaking down testosterone. So I want to introduce my guests, and you guys are going to, I tell you what, my guests today, they are fierce. And I say that every week on the show because we only have fierce guests, so that way everybody's still happy. But it's true. So, hey, uh, welcome back again to the show. So let me introduce my guest today. My first guest today, uh, he is awesome. i got to break it down. And let me read you his credentials because his credentials run deep. So I'm going to introduce my friend, Dr. Kyle Kiriluk. He's a board-certified urologist with Euro Partners. Check him out, www.europartners.com. Dr. Kiriluk, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me, Dr. G. It's, uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it all week long. So. Yeah, so, I'm so excited. i got to tell a quick story how we know each other, of course. Uh, I know your wife, uh, Dr. Dr. Shivani Jane, Shivani Kirilik, and she was on my show a few months ago breaking down the gut microbiome. So after, after we had an awesome show with her, and by the way, check out that episode, we broke down the gut microbiome with Dr. Kirilik, his wife. Uh, and then after we, after uh, she and I connected here, we, you and I, they connected. We had a great dinner together. We met our spouses and all that kind of stuff. And I go, hey, we got to have a show. And so I'm so happy to be here. So happy that you're here today. So let's, let me ask you this: Where did you go to medical school? Let's break it down a little bit. Where did you go to medical school? Where did you do your residency? And maybe a few opening remarks about testosterone, things that you may hear in your daily practice. Absolutely. So uh, I went to medical school at Rush University in Chicago, and then uh, residency at University of Chicago. Uh, testosterone, kind of as you already alluded to, there's there's a lot of stuff out there and uh, a lot of I think myths associated with it that um, you know in for men they kind of it, it's almost like a snake oil back uh, back in the the wild west in some ways in terms of what they say it can do and 
and what expectations patients have, uh, a fountain of youth, and, and that's not that's not always the case. So Excellent. Yeah. Well, I'm so excited, though. We're going to break this down and get a little more granular with you in a moment, but thank you again for coming out today. I want to introduce my next guest. He and I go way back to our days at Loyola University Medical Center, uh, a longtime friend of mine, expert colleague as well, too. Uh, and just just a great human being and runs an awesome practice. So I want to introduce a good friend of mine. I'm going to read his credentials because I don't want to mess them up. His credentials run deep too. Again, everybody has great credentials. Here we go. My next my next guest, Dr. Hong Lee. He's a board certified endocrinologist, diabetes and endocrinology group. Check him out. www.drhonglee.com. Dr. Lee, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Happy to Hey, the Dr. Lee, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where did you go to your medical school? Where did you do your training um, and your, your fellowship? And also a few opening remarks about what the steam of testosterone means to you today. Sure, sure. So I went to med school in Minnesota, U of Minnesota. And then afterward, I get my internal med residency and the endocrine fellowship uh, at Loyola. Okay, And now I'm practicing um, in the Hinsdale area. So, you know, me being an uh, endocrine clinic, so... You know, we see a lot of diabetic patient, patient with thyroid, but in terms of our hormone, right, female hormone and male hormone, which is the you know low testosterone hypogonadism, that's this that's the patient that we see, you know, uh, every day. And then actually interestingly, because when we look back, we just look at the prescription of testosterone in the US market from two thousand twelve to two thousand nineteen it go up by fivefold. Wow. So let let's just let you say, you know, with the more media uh, you know, coverage, more awareness. That's why, you know, it's something that we see a lot. So I'm glad you do this episode. Today. All right. Well, thank you, Dr. Lee. And again, uh, I, you know, my thing today is really to kind of set the record straight. Again, you know, we want you out there, we want you as, as listeners to the show to, to make the right decisions, but we want you to make informed decisions. At the end of the day, you know, we want you to get your health information from trusted experts licensed clinicians. I don't want you to get your health information from, I'm going to be honest, I'm just going to real talk, but I don't want you to get your health information from some uh, high school kid that works at the local health store. You know, I want you guys to be invested, invested in your health so you can make the right decisions for you and your well-being. But again, our job as docs is to make sure our patients have success. We give them the right tools for success. And part of that is making sure that we're telling the truth. Again, uh, building trust, delivering truth is what we do on Tear Up with Dr. G. So now you guys have met my guests. It's so awesome. So what we do each week, you've met the guests, we break it down a little bit for you. Again, we're talking about everything testosterone, the myths, the facts, and other realities. So when people come to our office, we call that the chief complaint. The chief complaint, uh, when somebody comes to your office, it's the reason why they're there for you, those of you who don't know. And so they tell their story. So today, the chief complaint, a.k.a. the question of the hour, is... I'll read it to you. Men are inundated with many testosterone advertisements that appeal to machismo. So what are the myths, facts, and other realities of this hormone? So we're going to sound like this. Before we dive into this, I want to just ask each guy, because I ask this to all my docs that come to the show, just in general term. Let's ask this question. Just generally speaking, before we dive into this, um, let me ask you this question. So how do we create, I'm going to ask this to Dr. Carol, just generally speaking, how do we create urgency in health you know how you know we, 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 we can't deny that we have health epidemics in this country just a quick quick kind of take on this what, what do you think that we should be doing out there to improve health just kind of quick take I ask this to all the docs you know it's a it's a, a very challenging situation and um, you know a lot of especially men in general uh, they don't like to come in and see the doctor you know <laughs> we we kind of ignore our, our problems sometimes and uh, you know, I, I, I routinely see it in, uh, more commonly, not with testosterone so much, but someone with blood in their urine, and it's been going on for months, and they just say, maybe it'll get better, maybe it'll get better. Uh, I think we just have to have open discussions whenever we can about the importance of uh, coming in if you feel there's a problem, and, and we're, we're here to help out, and it's not scary to see the doctor. A lot of times, people are really afraid to come in, and it's usually a conversation uh, more than anything else. I love it. You know, we've got to have that conversation. We have to be open, and we have to be, and know what we want to do. Dr. Lee, just a brief kind of opening remark on, just generally speaking, what should we be doing to live healthier lifestyles? Live healthier lifestyles. I mean, for me, you know, I see a lot of patients who are like overweight, obese, or with type 2 diabetes. I think I will focus more on, you know, we have to, you know, really revisit what we eat. A lot of time I told them, just let like you say there's a healthcare urgency, like 
you know, forget about the norm because what the norm what everyone in your house and your at work they eat, maybe everyone is not eating well. Your 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 exercise intensity may not be enough. So forget about the norm, you think about what really good. You know, sometimes I even ask them, look back on the video show in the seventies, see what people eat, the amount and the choice. So that's how I kind of like encourage them to think outside the box. Think about, oh, everyone eats this way. Well, then everyone is not good. That's why, you know, now in terms of diabetes and obesity is kind of like endemic in this country. Yeah, I agree. I, you know, for me, I told my patients, I go, you know, I have to break it down three ways. I go, what do you want to do? Uh, why do you want to do it? And how are we going to get there? Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think we have to have those kind of frank conversations and not be afraid as clinicians to talk to our patients on whatever health topic. Yes, we're going to be focused on testosterone. We're talking about testosterone today, but, but we want people to be comfortable. There's no such thing as crying wolf when it comes to your health. And I think every doc here, the docs here today would agree, as Dr. Carroll just mentioned, you know, something's going on, and it's been going on for longer than probably a few days or so, you might want to think about getting that checked out. You know, on the flip side, you know, you know, some people will say, I don't want to run to the doctor for every single thing that's going on, but again, we want you to take ownership of your health, because again, you're going to take ownership of your life. So here we go. So testosterone, I like that. Thanks, guys, for a little opening commentary. I asked to all the docs. So here we go. So let's just break it down a little bit. Testosterone 101. So I'll ask this question to, to Dr. To Dr. Kirla. Just generally speaking, uh, what is testosterone? Well, it's uh, viewed as the you know male hormone, so to speak, and it uh, supports several important functions in the body: uh, sperm production and. Uh, uh, helps promote muscle uh, growth and bone health. Uh, there's some controversial aspects about testosterone in terms of uh, cognition and, and overall brain function, but uh, I think we'll probably yeah, get, we'll get into to that, that a little stuff. bit. Uh, yeah. Awesome. You know, I would say, you know, when I tell my guys, and, and again, we're talking about why, why do we seem to be inundated with information? We're getting into that kind of stuff because it's just there. But I always think like guys want to get like an edge. You know, guys want to have an advantage of some sort of life, and and maybe you know this kind of advertised miracle, uh, uh, this 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 uh, miracle uh, drug. Uh, might be the answer to all that ails that person. And I think, you know, a, a human curiosity always comes in because, you know, hey, you know, this might give me this edge. I'm looking to lose a little weight. I'm looking to gain a little muscle. I'm looking to be better in the bedroom. I'm looking for, for anything. I'm looking for cognition or whatever it's going to be. And so, guys, I think not every guy is gullible, but many of us, of us guys may be gullible and start doing these kind of things. It's spending lots and lots of money. We can all tell stories of guys that have spent a lot of money on testosterone uh, supplements out there and have gotten zero uh, benefit from a clinical standpoint. On the flip side, maybe we've all had those cases where somebody might try something uh, without consulting their physician first and then they actually do have some benefits. So let me ask this question to Dr. Lee. Well, Dr. Lee, generally speaking, where is testosterone made in the body? Yeah. It's making the testes of a guy. And so, and so, and so, and so I, I always tell this to my guys out there, uh, protect your nuts. And so at the end of the day, yes, we make the testosterone from our testes uh, and the testicles and certainly has so much to do with everything, uh, male secondary sexual uh, um, uh, characteristics, the growth as Dr. Kirill talked about and other things as well too. So I mean, testosterone is, we need it. Uh, we're just so inundated with so much information, but we want people to do it the right way. So let me ask you, ask you a follow-up question, Dr. Lee. Yeah. Um, you know, there, we're talking about some of the many physiological effects of testosterone in adults, you know. Um, <laughs> but again, we get inundated. So does everybody, in your opinion, do us guys, do we all need to be bodybuilders? Do we all need to be baseball players or football players? Because it seems like that's what the advertisements are out there for. Hey, you could be a baseball player or a football player, just take this testosterone. Yeah, I think maybe there's a, a commercial component on that. But I have to say, you know, when I look at my patient, you know, like for some patients, maybe they have more physical work or they maybe in law enforcement or construction or fireman, maybe they have a different expectation in terms of like, oh, you know, I, how much strength of muscle I need and I, they don't want to deteriorate as opposed to many of us on the office work is different. So maybe kind of like also based on, you know, back, the background too, you know, to me, that's how I see it, so. Yeah, and again, I think I think that's where, you know, remember those days when guys used to, I mean, they're still doing it, but back in the days where guys would, you know, take a needle, an injection in the, in the, in the gluteus, mm -hmm. uh, in, in the butt, and then actually get these 
massive gains from doing this hormone and there's no doubt that there's a lot of truth in that mm -hmm. but there are some potential perils when you're doing that kind of stuff and again, we want people to get their information from docs if they want to do something in their what, related to their health I always say as an intern as I say consult me ask me I, I may have an opinion uh, uh, but but I want people to have that conversation before they potentially give it to some potential challenges but there's no doubt that hormones are so powerful in the body uh, and that some of the gains that you can get are amazing and again everybody I think for us guys out there we're looking for that edge and I'll be honest I've seen some of those things as I'm reading through a magazine I'm like huh yeah, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe my wife, Miss Tiffany, might want to see me a little more buffed up a little bit. Uh, and uh, she's listening to this show right now. Mm -hmm. But maybe she wants to see me a little buffed up a little bit uh, or do something like this. Or I feel like I want to get a little more energy, a little more prep on my set. But I would say, you know what, let's look at more of the, more of the real causes. Maybe somebody has low energy because they're not getting good sleep. Maybe, maybe the diet's got to change. Maybe they're not doing what I always advocate, predominantly plant-based nutrition. Maybe there's oh, un unburdened stress because you're commuting an hour each way, each day to the work and back. And so there's other things that you got to look at the play instead of just jumping right to the magic bullet, so to speak. What's your thoughts on that, Dr. Kira Luck? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you, uh, you're you kind of going over the vague symptoms that people present with, with low testosterone. And, and all the time people come in and say, you know, I'm tired. I think I have low T. And it's like, well, I'm tired too, you know, and who, who isn't tired? It's, uh, so it's it's something where the, the the question is always, are the symptoms someone is experiencing, is it truly related to having low testosterone? And then uh, if I'm going to do an evaluation, I, I always set the expectation that even if you have low testosterone and we correct it, you may still have the same exact symptoms and and it's kind of you know we have to look at quality of life and how this is gonna how this is gonna help you excellent dr dr lee you want to expand on that it's interesting that, that dr carol just said that that you know you can correct certain things and then guys are so symptomatic can you give some more examples that you see in your clinical practice sure sure to follow what dr carol said you know like there's a lot of symptoms some of them may be more like general that could be overlapped with you know, can be from hypogonadism, but also can be from other stuff, lack of sleep, you know, anemia, or, you know, hypothyroid, right? But, you know, from us, from the endocrine standpoint, there's only three things specific. When we see that, we say, yeah, more likely, quite sure, is that you're low in testosterone. So those three things, one is, um, you know, if they have, like, suddenly the, the testes get smaller. Okay. Right? The second one is, if there's an acute, as an adult, suddenly they're losing the um, body hair in the uh, armpit and the groin area. Okay. And the third one is, if you look back at the history, it seems like they never get complete puberty okay. in terms of the um, body hair distribution or maybe the voice. You know, they kind of almost look like kind of boyish. Those are the more specific ones. But other than that, you know, there's, you know, all the other things in terms of sex function, erection, libido, those can be like multifactorial, like you said. Okay. It's interesting, I want to repeat what, what Dr. Lee just said. You know, you mentioned a smaller testicle size, loss of some body hair in, the, in the, your armpits, uh, and then also you mentioned, what was the last one you mentioned? So incomplete uh, puberty. Incomplete puberty, okay, very interesting. So, so you know, again, if guys, if, again, I tell the guys out there that listen to the show, if you're feeling something's wrong, talk to your physician. Uh, I cannot understate that, uh, you know, I cannot state that even more clearly. We want people to, be, to, to, to come to us, whether you come to me as an internist, or you see Dr. Kirillik as a urologist, or you see Dr. Lee as an endocrinologist, you know, we want guys to go ahead and come forward with that information. Again, we want you to have your best life and your best health. But well, without having that initial conversation, we got we to gotta talk about it. And again, I don't, I've had plenty of guys that come in my practice that have spent, you know, six, seven, eight months taking an over-the-counter testosterone stuff at their local, from the local health food store, from the local high school kid that's selling the product. And, and they, to the tune of spending, you know, hundreds of dollars or a thousand dollars, I had a guy just a few weeks ago that came in, uh, had six, uh, six months on a, on, a, on a product that I'm not going to name. Um, and he said it didn't. I go, why did you start taking this? Well, I'm having fatigue. You know, I want to lose some body fat. I want to gain some muscle. And the guy's in his 50s. You know, he's got obesity. And, you know, and he's like, and so, I got, so I asked him straight up. I go, you know, did you notice anything? Is your energy better? Did you get, did you shed some weight? And, and, and the answer was, uh, was clearly no. And, and so I kind of said, you know, I could have saved you hundreds of dollars and we could have maybe just you know, had this conversation and then start to work it up a bit. And so, again, you know, we want guys to go ahead and get your health information from, from the docs. So let me ask this question um, to Dr. Kirillik. So Dr. Kirillik, uh, uh, Dr. Dr. Lee mentioned uh, low testosterone, also called hypogonadism. But I have to pick your brain on this one. So there's so many words to describe 
uh, low testosterone. So I want to read you kind of this word soup of things. So here it is. I, I, I got it written down because I want to write it down. So the word soup of low testosterone, hypogonadism, uh, androgen deficiency syndrome, androgen deficiency syndrome in the aging male, also called Adam, andropause or male menopause. Male menopause? Late onset hypogonadism, male hypogonadism, or the newest one this day and age, testosterone deficiency syndrome. So let me ask you this question. Does it all really matter, you know, how you name it? I mean, you gotta call it, you know, if a duck's a duck, it's a duck. You know, if a quack's like a duck, it's a duck. Does it matter when you're seeing patients, like, how you, how you phrase it? I mean, what do you say? It's just I, I just, it's just I, 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 yeah, it's I think it really, the, the name doesn't matter so much, and uh, maybe part of that's mm -hmm. marketing. Right, I mean, because the, uh, the male you know, menopause. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you know, yeah, it just it does come down to um, you know what is it is it truly from low testosterone, and if I correct that, will it truly help um, improve quality of life, and are there any health benefits to to, to changing it? What um, you know, what I'm interested to hear about too is just what is truly the definition of, of low testosterone. We don't even agree on a value for what normal ranges are at a, any particular age and it's uh, you know for all the money that's spent and all the the time that's spent on it the fact that we don't have that information is uh, is, is always been very interesting to me. Dr. Lee, why don't you expand on that a little bit because uh, it's, it's true you know you might have patients coming in and say hey uh, check my levels first like check just check my levels doc and then you give them a lot so say you do the test and it comes at you know 300 or 500 or you know why can't we have any consensus on the matter and you know how do you kind of approach that where you see a lab and you're really trying to look at at the patient as a whole and not necessarily focus on the lab I would say a lot of time you know when they came to see me referred by the primary doctor many of them maybe already have the initial workup have a testosterone lab already let's like say then I will make sure I look at the lab I make sure it has to be due in the morning and also the other thing is ideally they were fasting overnight because actually after someone eat it can lower your testosterone so the number can be falsely a bit low okay so ideally we, we could I will ask them because testosterone release is kind of like diurenal kind of like circadian rhythm so I would say if you can do it two hours after you get up and if, if, if time allow you do it twice then we'll get a good number yeah so you're a big advocate of repeating the test so say like I as a primary care doc I ordered the test mm -hmm. and it's low and then they send me your way or um, you, you're very much an advocate of making sure that they repeat the test if they could and if I could. have to say if possible I would try to get the one with both total and three testosterone in one combo okay because you know the the free testosterone is the really the, the soldier the army and the blood to, to the function of testosterone and then, but the total gives the three combined with the reserve. So it's more accurate, we know the three. It's true that even with my um, organization, Endocrine Society, they, they recommend you can start with low, uh, the total. But for me, I can see sometimes the total may be a bit off, but the three is okay. Because some people may just have a bit lower reserve. Um, so I would say we get both, and then we get a better perspective. So go ahead, Dr. Kier, look. Part of uh, part of the reason also for getting that second check has to do with insurance. You know, if you if you don't have that second check, insurance may not cover it. It is quite expensive. There are some other clinics that may rely on just the one and charge you cash only. Uh, and yes, we are very familiar with some of those yes, clinics that are out so, there. They will um, remain nameless. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, <laughs> they it's, know who they are. Yeah. But if you, you know, if, if you truly have the diagnosis, it, it should be something that's consistent over time. And, and that's also part of the, the point of, of making sure that that's the case. Excellent. You know, it's interesting. I was at a conference uh, not too long ago. And um, we're just, uh, actually, it was actually probably when I was trying to take my, re-up my boards two years ago for internal medicine. And, and they did a lecture on testosterone. And they had uh, guys come in that are considered now andrologists. And I thought that was very interesting. Again, going back to this word soup um, <laughs> of different words, ways to describe low testosterone. But I thought it was very interesting because testosterone is, is legit. I mean, it's real stuff. And so we presented some data on, on the clinical implications of testosterone deficiency or male menopause or andropause, however we're going to call it. And so things like insulin resistance and diabetes, inflammation, atherosclerosis, uh, hardening of those artery walls, hypertension, vascular stiffness, and so having actually having a, having a combination of high blood pressure, 
uh, uh, plaque buildup in those walls with hardening of those walls as well too. That is risky. There's no doubt that that is risky for heart attack, cardiovascular disease. So, so, so we don't want guys to be, uh, kind of my take home message from that uh, conference was, we don't want guys to be hanging out super low. Plus they might feel physiologically, they might have some physiological manifestations where they feel like, feel like crap. But, but there are some implications in having it low. Of course, we don't, we want to prevent diabetes. We know that about if the, according to the CDC guidelines, 80% of diabetes is preventable if we just have a healthy lifestyle. So it's 80% or 80% plus or 90% plus of cardiovascular disease preventable. We just don't do these kind of things. And so, so my point is that, that we want to take testosterone seriously. If a guy has low testosterone, we want to properly work that up and hopefully start some proper treatment. So let me ask this question to Dr. Lee. And we'll do a few more of these questions related to low testosterone and then I want to kind of flip the thing. So say, say there's a guy mm -hmm. out there and he has certain kind of dis I guess the question I'm trying to say is like, when should, you know, guys are coming in, they're coming off the street saying, Doc, screaming, screaming, screaming. Are there any particular patient profiles you're looking for when you're going to screen them for low testosterone? Is it like this patient with this diagnosis, this patient with this diagnosis, et cetera, et cetera. Is there like a, a typical patient um, based on their past medical history that should be screened? Wow, for screening, I would say yes. I would say yes. I would say in general, we won't recommend just broad screening because there's some studies show that even 30% of people who I don't even call them patients, but 30% of men, you know, they can have no symptom, but when you check it, the testosterone level can be a bit on the low range. But if, if you talk about who should be screened, I would say there's really a broad, but for sure, if someone um, have the symptom of fatigue. And then you have, you know, those, you know, we talk about the losing the, the, the body hair, and then combine maybe with a history of, you know, some patients, they have HIV, HIV yeah. that can cause it. And um, also if patient, you know, with a history of like some head injury, or like some cancer treatment or radiation, those those may play a role. Yeah. Okay. You know, uh, Dr. Kirlick, are you seeing any particular guys that you might see in your, in your practice that you say, ah, you know what, maybe we should be screened at all? Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, what? What's a little more common for me is anyone that has uh, fertility issues. Uh, that's uh, yeah. that's really important to uh, to evaluate, and um, especially you know typically for that we'll also be getting semen analyses. If semen analyses are normal, then it kind of uh, obviates a need for that. But uh, also erectile dysfunction uh, mm -hmm. in general, and it's uh, it's something where. A lot of men, again, come in with erection problems thinking that they may have low testosterone. Sometimes they do, and, and that can be a help. But a lot of times, uh, unfortunately, erectile dysfunction is a, a marker of other just cardiovascular illness. Absolutely. And, and it's important that they come in and have screening and also realize the, uh, the, the cardiac implications behind that. One of the first things, speaking of erectile dysfunction, one of the first things that I do if a guy comes in and sees me is before they get the little blue pill that's out there, I do a full cardiovascular workup. I found a number of patients that have failed the EKG or failed a stress test. And looking at the reason why you have erectile dysfunction is, is, is a truly a vascular issue. And so before they can get the blue pill or any similar pill, they have to have a full clearance from a cardiac standpoint because it's dangerous. We're talking about, you know, uh, at the end of the day, heart disease wins out over, over, or, over erectile challenges. But let me ask you this question because, you know, how do you have that conversation? Of like what a guy, and maybe I'll ask this question to Dr. Dr. Lee first, and then Dr. Carol, you can cue in, uh, chime in. So say I have a guy. Say I'm a guy. Mm -hmm. I am a guy, but it's you know it is what it is. But say I'm a guy. I'm you know 35, 40 years old. I'm not thinking about 15 years from now. I'm I'm just thinking of my hey, I'm here, I'm present. But maybe I have high blood pressure. Um, you know, maybe I got pre-diabetes. Maybe I'm diabetic. But how do you have that conversation with guys like in their 40s and say, hey, by the time you're 50, you actually may have erectile dysfunction. You know, you know, how do you even get that? That's not even on somebody's radar when they're in their 40s. And then, of course, you see the guys when they come into their, your office in their 50s and they, may, and they may have erectile dysfunction. You trace back the history and find out, hey, there were some risk factors for this. Also, let's check your testosterone too. But how do you kind of have that conversation with, with, to plant the seed um, uh, with patients that may be at risk for erectile dysfunction? I think me being a male physician, talk about this with guys, with men patients, usually it's okay. As long as, you know, I show that respect and more than not making fun of them. I just brought it up like, you know, so do you still have morning erection? Or how is you and your partner, you know, how is your, your libido, your sex drive, or how is your sex life? And, and usually people are pretty open about it. 
Yeah, they may be a little bit m more embarrassed if their spouse in the room too. And but you get a good point. If I, we sometimes we don't ask, we don't know. They don't they don't brought up before this maybe part of the normal aging. But we brought up and say, yeah, now you're not that great. And can you imagine ten years from now or when you're on 50, 55, you'll be worse. They may give them even more initiative to get their blood pressure better, get their yes. the weight and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, we have to talk less. So, what's your take on that one? Well, I, well absolutely. You know, I, I think it's, and uh, in, in I don't have to deal with this as much as, as both of you, but uh, struggling to, to help people control diabetes and high blood pressure, they don't see the initial effects of that. Uh, but for erections, that is oftentimes one of the one of the first signs, and, and that can be, you know, something that may hopefully motivates them to take control of the situation. Excellent. Let me ask this question, because there's some things, you know, we're talking about some of the things here. Hey guys, you're listening to us here. We're at Intellectual Radio Studios. We're, you're listening to us live on Facebook. We're having this conversation about, about um, testosterone. We're talking a little bit about erections right now, and that's fine, because we want to talk about this kind of stuff, because a lot of guys have these kind of questions. We're look, talking about it in relation to uh, low testosterone. So let me ask this question, and, and you kind of already look, come back at you, Dr. Kerlick, uh, just to be kind of clear. So say you are treating a guy that has low testosterone, you're treating for erections, and things are not getting better. Um, you know, you treated the testosterone, maybe you've had the level normalized, but the erections are still, still, still bad. What are some things that you're doing at that point to help the guy? If the guy's sole mission is to achieve an erection, <laughs> what are some things that you're doing well, for that guy? That's, uh, you know, it's, it's a, you know, it's kind of an algorithm almost, right? I mean, you start with medications like the blue pill. If that doesn't work, there are, you know, injectable medications that everyone's a little bit nervous about, but they can work well. There are actual surgeries where you can implant an artificial device that, uh, that works. Um, another thing, just in general, I always tell patients to be open with their partners. Uh, sometimes troubles with erections aren't aren't really a uh, a medical issue, but just daily stressors and anxiety, and uh, and those are things that if someone's open with their partner, it helps relieve the situation and it can improve things. Okay, Dr. Lee, let me ask you this question. You know, you t mentioned earlier about some uh, specific, more specific symptoms. Guys that may have had some, that may have gone through incomplete puberty. Guys that have smaller testicles. Guys that have lost some body hair in the in the armpit region. Um, or the pubic region, reduce shaving. Uh, we talked a little bit earlier, there, there are some less specific things, you know, and, and fatigue is such a broad description. When people come into my office and they say, hey, I've got fatigue, you know, of course, me as an intern, I'm thinking of every single possibility, and it may be hard to nail down in one visit, uh, but a lot of guys will say, hey, i got fatigue. Um, but are there some other kind of less specific things besides just fatigue or decreased libido or some erection challenges that might that might signal a uh, low testosterone in a guy like other less other, specific yeah less specific symptoms like maybe like sleep challenges or dr carol mentioned you know controversial about concentration or mood or things like that yeah i would say you know like from the like not that specific i think you know like you say the uh, sexual function the ejaculation and then maybe sometimes they complain about like less to you harder to concentrate or brain fog, and those could be, you know, could be, yeah. Okay. Dr. Gerlich, your, top, your uh, take on that? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that um, if, I, if I had someone that comes in and says, you know, my, my, my partner uh, feels that I'm not interested in them anymore, and it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a lack of libido that, that's affecting the relationship, that's always something to me that, uh, that I'm worried about, low testosterone. So, so let me ask you the follow-up question, because I get this all the time. So say I've got the, I've got the couple in the room, and you know, they're saying, oh, I'm not interested in this relationship, and they say, Doc, check my, check my testosterone. And of course, it comes back normal, because yeah. we've all been there when it comes back normal. And then they say, well, it's got to be testosterone. You know, what, what, what's, what's next? You know, and it's 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 a it's a it's a it's a hard challenge to go through to say like why does a guy you know you can't always explain why a guy's got decreased libido, uh, or, or I mean you want to try to explain it don't get me wrong but 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 sometimes you just can't and maybe it is more of you know maybe there's some other symptoms like they have you know maybe depression or maybe there's some other kind of mood disorders that are going on there so it's always kind of a challenge sometimes when you see that let me ask this question. Uh, and again, there's this thing that always comes up when I'm thinking about these ads. Again, we're inundated with things, and it's all there's this ad that's on the radio that says, "Guys, know your levels." So, as a as a urologist, as an endocrinologist, me as an internist, does the level really matter? And actually, let's define this first. Maybe Dr. Lee, I'll give you this question: Is there a level that your your society defines as low testosterone? 
Yeah, I think there's a range, and, okay. and the range will be, you know, kind of, sometimes can be specific about the lab you use, there's a range. And then I would say if, if the lab was doing the right time, and patient really like in the morning, well, after a good sleep, and, and you know, it could be low. If it's low combined with symptom, then yeah, I would say yes, likely they have hypogonadism. Okay. You know. What num just out of curiosity, what number do you define, like what number do you use for, uh, for a cutoff? I, I would, uh, again, I would look at the free testosterone more, and then I would say, um, I forget that the range right now. Uh, I think the range is it's so funny. I was looking at it today because yeah. um, I had a patient. I was looking at some labs, mm -hmm. and I thought from at least our lab, it was like 50 on the low end or 46 on the low end, mm -hmm. and up to about maybe 170 or so on the high on the free levels. And then on the total, you know, 300 considered low, well, up to like 1,200. And that's just a gigantic range, yeah. and it can mean completely different things for each person. A absolutely, and I, you know, I use a I use a cutoff of 300 for total. Mm -hmm. There are some societies that use 250. Mm -hmm. um, I, I find it easier to use just a higher. You know, everyone. More is more, more, higher, higher, yeah. Yeah, on, more, is, more is always better, right? So, um, yeah, I use 300, and uh, it's interesting to hear your take on the free versus total because uh, it, it can be a little controversial in, in, mm -hmm. in terms of how much that, that ratio matters, but uh, certainly something that I'll consider going forward. Yeah, thank you. So let me ask this question. So we're talking about certain things, obviously testosterone, that's a good goal today. So some people would say, well, doc, how do I get my testosterone up? You know, and so I kind of think of it as a as a clinical, as a clinician. You know, hey, obviously there's there's treatments out there. We think of like the FDA approved uh, agents that are out there, the, the pharmacologic agents. Let's be honest, and then of course some of the non pharmacological. So I'm going to take the non pharmacological approach, uh, and I'm going to kind of pick your guys' brains on what you guys do from a pharmacological approach. So I think like again, so if, if a guy's out there, listen up, guys. Here we go. We're going to break it down for you. Uh, so. so if a guy has, for example, if a guy has sleep apnea, treat the sleep apnea. Because uh, actually in some, some guidelines might call for uh, guys with sleep apnea to be screened for testosterone. Uh, exercise, weight loss, you know, going back to the basics, uh, I think that's an important thing that we, all of us should be doing and maybe it has, might have a benefit. Now, I can say that we can all probably say we've advised people to exercise and they do a lot of stuff and they still have low levels. Um, stress reduction. Meditation, yoga, that's also a good thing out there for people to do, but we should be doing probably that stuff every way. Anyway, uh, a couple of things I like to do. If guys are on opioids, actually it's been shown that opioids can actually help, can actually lower some testosterone levels, so we're gonna get them off of opioid therapy, very interesting on that thing. It's something that I, that I learned relatively recently at a conference, and I thought it was quite interesting, but we know there's an opioid epidemic going on, and so you wanna see the effect of that on testosterone levels. And then I think like the last thing I'll probably say is just getting back to like return to normal sleep. Yeah, you know, I can't underestimate the importance of sleep. Uh, it helps the body recharge when you're sleeping. You make some growth hormone. Naturally, you feel better. You know, hopefully, you're waking up with some nice serotonin levels, this level, of, this feeling of well-being, and and you have some pleasurability and some dopamine, and maybe all that kind of leads to uh, you feeling better, and maybe helping that testosterone grow. So let me ask this question to Dr. Kirill, Dr. Kirill, what are the kind of pharmacological agents um, that from your end? I'll say from a urologist's end, and then maybe Dr. Lee from an endocrinologist's end. On what you guys are doing? So, like, what I what I use for replacements. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, the the standard one that I start with, just because it's easy, is uh, is a topical gel. Mm -hmm. uh, there are uh, implants essentially that are that that you can place in the skin and release. It's like a time release over time. Uh, there's like a an injectable that's a long lasting injection and then there's you know more traditional injections that are given you know every two to four weeks depending on the situation i i have patients that have had all those products and there's kind of pluses and minuses to to everything but um you know it really does start to come down to patient preference in, in some way, okay. in my experience. Dr. Lee, do you, do you find yourself doing some of the same techniques, same approaches? Yeah, I would say um, the gel and the weekly injection, the one that I use the most often, I think, I mean, for the, uh, for the, the older population, 50 or above, you know, they may like gel, they don't have to poke them themselves. The gel is good in terms of, you know, it's very steady, you know, like you, you do apply it every day and then it will just stay in the system, like steady. Uh, for the shot, the good thing about the shot is earlier, Dr. Kerry talked about sometimes insurance approval would be a bit harder. So for the for the for the injection, if 
we talk with the patient, the lab, having confirmed that they are hypogonadism, sometimes even if the insurance don't cover, for pair of pocket for the for the injection is still actually quite affordable. So that one, you know, I will have them do, you know, every week, you know. Sometimes, you know, they may even do like lower dose but every three days, so there'll be less of the peak and trolley. Yeah. Okay. They do recently uh, approve a pill. Oh. A, if they approve a pill, you do it twice a day. But that pill is not for everyone, but they like especially because there's a, this pill can increase the risk for high blood pressure. So they even have a black box warning, it may increase the risk for like stroke and TIA. So that one is mainly for patients who really have like um, structural problem, like Klein filter and the testicle, or some problem in the brain cannot release the stimulating hormones. So that's for those. Mm -hmm. You know, you're interested. You mentioned like you know, there, you know, there's no such thing as free lunch, as the saying goes. And, and yeah, um, you know, if you overshoot some targets or guys are taking some stuff, you know, on the street or whatever, or they're taking some of these subs that might be available without a prescription. Yeah, there's. You can potentially have some, there are some complications of super physiologic, so above the physiologic uh, goals of testosterone, you mentioned high blood pressure, cholesterol, we're seeing that, liver disease. You can see a lot of different things that are going on there, you know, mood issues, you know, insomnia. And so a lot of things can go on that, again, the, the high school kid at your local health store is not telling you that kind of stuff. And, and so, again, we want you to get your information from your doc uh, because I think it's, we have to be honest with our patients and tell them all the risks. Again, there's no free such as free lunch, but we want to sort of our hallmark of treatment is to make guys feel better uh, and continue to have success in their health. Yeah. I, you know, I, I think that um, you know, I have a lot of patients that, you know, again, they, they see the visual results. The muscle mass, baby. Yeah. But yeah. external appearances do not equate to healthier insides. <laughs> and, I like and, it's, that. and it's something that, you know, people think they're healthier, but in fact, um, they, they may be having risks because of, of the use of testosterone, yeah. and, and it's important to know that. Uh, yeah. Dr. Lee, any other kind of side effects or things that you may see if we if the targets are overshot or people that are coming in off the street and seeing them in their practice, but they may have some symptoms of, of maybe higher levels of testosterone than they ought to have? I think in general, like the testosterone, you know, it can promote uh, bone marrow to make more rapid cells. So some people can have a higher uh, amount of blood in the system which could be, you know, when the blood is more viscous, increase the risk for blood clot and yes. um, and stroke too. So even though the risk is relatively low, but those are stuff we explain to them and some of my patients maybe, I even recommend them to do therapeutic um, um, phlebotomy, like blood donation to lower the blood count, so. Excellent. Well, hey, I want to do this, guys. We've been having this awesome conversation. I got to get into my myths versus fat section. Sure. Uh, for those uh, that are new to the show and those, of course, that, are, that have been following the show for a long time, we do something every week called myths versus facts, setting the record straight. So here we go. Myths versus facts that testosterone shows. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say a statement and I'm going to have my panelists say myth or fact. We're going to kind of keep it kind of boom, 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 keep this going on. And there are right answers. There are opinions, of course. But again, we want you at the end of the day, even though we're going to do this, I want you at the end of the day to talk to your doc. You know, you're hearing some stuff from us, but talk to your doc. So here we go. Uh, myth or fact. Dr. Kerr, look, you get the first statement. I'm, I'll say the statement. You say myth or fact and tell us why in a few sentences. Here we go. If your doctor diagnoses you with obesity, metabolic syndrome, or diabetes, then the root cause is low testosterone. I would have to go myth with that one, and, and I would say it's actually the exact opposite, that more likely your, uh, mm -hmm. you know, your, your uh, diabetes is, uh, is the cause of low testosterone. We know that uh, if you're overweight, if you have extra fatty tissue, the fat actually creates estrogen, and then the estrogen blocks testosterone from, from uh, being produced in the body. Excellent, I agree. Here we go, next one. Here we go, Dr. Lee, here's a statement. Low testosterone is undertreated and underdiagnosed, myth or fact. Can I say depends? <laughs> yes, you can. Hey, it's your, it's your opinion. It depends. It's your show, but it's your opinion. I it's think all good. Study did, did show that in the last decade, actually, there's um, there's more awareness. But you know, lately, you know, there's um, it may be that some articles say that there's a concern of actually underdiagnosed with because now there's the media, not media, I should say. Actually, there's now there's sometimes there's some reports say that it, there may be a negative effect on the cardiac health. So sometimes it kind of like draw us, the provider, to offer the patient so it may be under, undiagnosed sometimes. Yeah, I, and I would agree as, a, as an internist, you know, we want to keep people treated and, we, and certainly some of the studies that have been out there associating low testosterone with a whole host of 
increased risk for other uh, metabolic issues or, or physical diagnoses. So I agree with you. All right, here's a statement. Dr. Kirillik, low testosterone is a normal part of aging. Uh, we don't know, I would say. I mean, it's, it's something that, uh, again, we don't know normal levels across age ranges. And, um, you know, I think that many men will have levels that, uh, that, that stay normal as they age, but we do expect some decrease over time. And whether you say that's normal, uh, I don't know, but uh, <laughs> yeah. I agree. Wonderful. Here we go. Dr. Lee, here's a statement. Low testosterone can be linked to mood swings, fatigue, low energy, and a lack of drive to get up and do things. Myth or fact? I think it's a fact, but also other condition can cause those symptoms too. All right, thank you. Here we go, Dr. Kirillov. Here's a statement. There are no harms in taking over-the-counter supplemental testosterone formulations. Myth or fact? Uh, I would I would say that's an absolute myth. Uh, well, you know, the, the, the best example I can give, um, and it's not necessarily for testosterone, but people all the time are into supplements and supplements, and it's, I want to take a supplement rather than a prescription, and it's, it's they're both pills, right? Why would you... But um, vitamin E, right? You look at vitamin E and so many people that take that and studies that show excess vitamin E causes heart disease. And, and so a lot of times uh, we're putting things in our body that haven't been thoroughly looked at and who knows what's in the supplement that you're getting. Uh, and there, there may be risks that we're completely unaware of with it. You know, there's like a nice comic book strip and I, and I might be butchering it a little bit, but there's, a, there's, two, there's two lines. There's like a, two stands and there's like a, a receptionist or somebody in a stand and there's two lines. And the one line says drugs and pills and, the, uh, and it's got a full line of people and surgeries and then the line that says lifestyle changes and there's zero people in that line and so it's so true all right here we go dr lee we'll do a couple more of these things this is awesome here we go some active steps to prevent erectile dysfunction include exercising regularly keeping a healthy weight avoiding smoking or vaping and taking care of other problems including diabetes heart disease and kidney disease myth or fact yeah absolutely it's fact yeah. please explain um, because you know we, we talk about hypogonadism, low testosterone, some of them is functional, secondary to some chronic uh, condition. So in those patients, you know, if they can losing weight, they can they can, you know, get more um, more sleep, you know, those actually will help the the those uh, help the testosterone level and the function more than the replacement. All right, here we go, Dr. Carol. I think we answered this question already, but I'm saying it again. Here we go. Every adult male should know their testosterone levels. I hear on the commercials all the time. Myth or fact? I, I think every adult male should know their cholesterol levels and their ah, blood pressure levels. You excellent. Know, and not their testosterone. I like levels, that. Yeah, though. you know, I, I like that, and uh, it's good. As an internist, that makes you feel nice and warm and fuzzy. Uh, I know that my specialty mine. colleagues say that kind of stuff. Yeah, I have no idea mine is. I actually do for my labs. I actually did have my physical though everybody I just gotta go get my labs done it's happening very soon i promise i think all right here we go a couple more of these things here you go dr lee testosterone replacement therapy may or may not improve erectile dysfunction myth or fact uh it's a fact yeah i mean i mean for your erectile dysfunction many things may play a role to it like the blood flow nerve problem or psychological or hormonal so if it's related to the hormonal, you know, then the testosterone replacement, you know, may help it. All right, thank you. Here we go. Dr. Kirillik, we'll do two more of these. One for Dr. Kirillik and one for Dr. Dr. Lee. Here we go. Dr. Kirillik, testosterone replacement therapy will cause prostate cancer. Myth or fact? Uh, that, that's a myth, although maybe a little controversial, but I, I truly feel that, um, you know, testosterone is not the cause of cancer. It's a, I would describe it as the fuel that can feed cancer cells. And, and so... Uh, you know, the question from a prostate cancer standpoint is, well, how much do they need to be activated? And, you know, even if you have a little bit there, we find that cancer cells can be activated in, in, in patients in prostate cancer in advanced states. All right, thank you. Here's the last one. Myths versus facts. I've seen this one for Dr. Lee. Mm -hmm. I thought of you when I wrote this one on purpose. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> Testosterone excess will cause road rage, fighting among fathers at Little League games, and sexual promiscuity. Myth or fact? 
think road rage and fighting among father may play a role, you know. But most of it is there's a component of the uh, like you know the, the culture, of, you know, society and stuff, you know. Yeah, I think there's other issues at play on this one, but I would say testosterone is well, should not cause fights to break out at little league. Uh, soccer games or baseball games. So there you have it, everybody. Myth versus fact. So hey, we got about five minutes left. We've been having this awesome show talking about testosterone. You know, breaking down some of the myths, breaking down some of the facts, and certainly breaking down all the realities related to this. So uh, at the beginning of the show, I talked about the chief complaint. At the end, we call it the assessment of plan. The set the assessment of plan is when somebody leaves your office. They have a diagnosis. They have a game plan, and most importantly, a follow up. So let me ask this question to Dr. Lee first. Um, Dr. Lee, just give us a few take-home points. You know, people have been listening to our show today. Um, what are some take-home points that they should have from today's show about testosterone? How can we keep this conversation going on? I think, you know, sexual health is very important for men and also for, for like, a relation. So I think if they think that something may be related, don't hesitate to discuss with your physician. But also, you know, patients should have open mind that, you know, the symptom it also can be from something else not related to just a... Uh, testosterone level. Excellent. Uh, Dr. Lee, it's been awesome having you on my show today. Thank you very much for taking time of your schedule to help me out. All right, Dr. Kerluck, take us home a little bit. Give me a few take-home points out there. You know, people have been listening to our show, learn about testosterone, all this kind of stuff that we're doing. And uh, But just what are some messages for people out there, the men out there that are listening to us? What should they take away from the show? How can they be successful related to testosterone and their health? Uh, absolutely. Uh, so, um, you know, the I, I think that it it has to do with kind of goals of care to some degree and uh, I look at testosterone as something that it, it may if it brings you in and, and I can get it better and you feel better that's great but we also should consider again overall health and what what is this doing to make me uh, a healthier individual to protect me potentially from future heart problems will use of it cause heart problems and you know it's 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 a very controversial area uh, it's not right for everyone to have replacement, but certainly worth the discussion if you're if you're concerned about it. Thank you, Dr. Carol. It's been a pleasure having you on my show. And my final words are this, you know, guys, listen up. I love talking to guys, of course. I love talking to everybody. But guys, you know, I want you to take your health seriously. And I know many, many of you do, because many of you are my patients or patients of Dr. Kerlick or Dr. Dr. Lee. We know that people want to do better with their health. Sometimes we have to have these kind of conversations, uh, but we want people to have these conversations. That's the most important thing. When we talk about testosterone, yes, we need it. We exude it. We need it to, to thrive. But we want to make sure it's done in a safe way. We want to make sure that you have proper testing, but really coming back to your lifestyle. Things that make you feel good, things that give you vitality and strength and energy to do the things that you want to do with your family and your loved ones, that's really our broader mission, and I don't want you to lose sight of that. So again, I want to thank, some, thank my guests today, Dr. Hong Lee, let me read his credentials again, this has been an awesome show, Dr. Hong Lee, board certified endocrinologist, diabetes and endocrinology group, check him out, www.drhonglee.com, thank you Dr. Lee, my good friend Dr. Kyle Kiraluk, board certified urologist at Europartners, check him out, www.europartners.com. Hey, you've been listening and watching live on Facebook at intellectualradio.com. This episode is written by Mark D. Gomez, MD, and Tiffany E.R. Gomez. Producer is Tiffany E.R. Gomez. Music is by the wonderful Mr. Havis. Copyright 2019 by MDG Wellness, LLC. All rights reserved. Hey, stay tuned for my next episode. I'll be back in two weeks. We're going to be talking about the best sleep ever. And remember... If you like this show, share with others. This is the only way to get the message out. We want people to take action on their health. We want you to feel great. And check this out, guys. I'll see you in a couple weeks. Have a great day. Check out our website, www.drmarkovis.com. And peace out. Peace. Muscles. <laughs>